Um, I'll get straight to your point. Um, I, I uh, also agree uh, that the left has been in decline, and I do believe it's the left's fault that the left has been in decline for a generation. I think everybody can see that. And I think it's because the left really hasn't provided an alternative. In the 80s, when all the factories were closing, uh, what was the alternative? To fight uh, to keep the factory there? Well, uh, obviously that w wasn't happening, uh, so the factory moved and we lost. There wasn't an alternative to the daily bump and grind of, you know, producing uh, stuff in the manufacturing sector. Uh, there wasn't really an inspiring new model of how to do things, and I think that was really the fault of the left. And I think that's also why uh, U.S. workers are complicit in imperialism. I use complicit like this because they actually think they're doing the right thing. Uh, the left really hasn't provided an alternative, so uh, there's no cognitive dissidence there. Uh, when I talk to ordinary people who are either lukewarm or supportive of the U.S. military, they'll just say that they're doing the right thing. 99% uh, of the people I talked to thought we were doing the right thing in previous humanitarian interventions uh, because we hadn't really provided a way to step out of their mental framework uh, per se. Because a lot of these people that the U.S. has combated in the past decade have been real monsters. Uh, especially when you look at the Iraqi resistance, if you're trying to say that's re representative of the Iraqi people, that's kind of ridiculous. The Badir organization, uh, or sh I should say the Badir Brigade, was started by Iran. It was funded and trained in Iran. It's an exile organization that came back, and now that's part of uh, the government, but once uh, the U.S. decides to change its policy, it'll start becoming part of the resistance. The, resi the resistance got most of its arms from uh, Saddam's stockpiles, and who had the keys to that? A certain sector of the Ba'athist Party. Uh, they knew where the gun stocks were, uh, and they had the most access to weapons. So I'm not, I'm not sure how you could say it's necessarily a democratic resistance because a certain number of people hold the arms in the movement, so they get to call the shots. The same thing would happen if you just abolished police in Chicago. Um, I don't think that would be a very popular proposition uh, here today if you polled the residents of Chicago who wants to get rid of the police because the people with the guns would take over. Uh, tortured in area too. Yeah, uh, I, de I mean, you have, there's a definite point uh, that we need to provide an alternative for security. I'm not saying I support the Chicago Police Department. Um, I've been a, no, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we need to create alternatives to the Chicago Police Department but while we're saying that we oppose their torture and the John Birch case, we have to provide an alternative for people to step into uh, while we uh, make these oppositions. Uh, if you walk around many of the poor areas, they're glad that they're putting up surveillance cameras because they don't want to be attacked uh, by people with guns. Um, you don't, you have to provide some sort of alternative for people to uh, jump on and start opposing these systems. Uh, like the crisis in Darfur, uh, I'm sure there's probably going to be an increase in the movement for people to send in U.S. troops, for the U.S. government to send in troops there to prevent genocide. Well. Um, I think that is imperialist. I think the U.S. intervention in Kosovo was not in humanitarian interest, and I don't think the U.S. intervention in Somalia in the early 90s was in humanitarian interests, but the left never articulated what we should do, um, how we should address the conflict in Darfur, because people are dying by the tens of thousands, uh, but we just never really discussed how we would address the issue in the immediate short term. Uh, unless it is with U.S. troops. So unless you provide these sorts of alternatives, people are going to stay in their paradigms uh, that they're thinking of. And they think that the U.S. military uh, goes out to protect and serve, just like they think the cops go out and protect and serve. Uh, so you need to help people step out of these uh, mental frameworks they've constructed. And these mental frameworks are reinforced by the media, by social relations, by the church they go to every Sunday. Uh, so this is like a very strong anchoring of their opinions and just handing them a pamphlet or something isn't really going to shake it that much. I mean, even watching the news on TV, uh, it's not really an honest depiction of what's going out on out there. And most people aren't in Iraq uh, seeing what's going on. And even soldiers coming back uh, haven't been given the fair airtime and haven't been publicized enough where people know what's going on in Iraq. So they're going to stay in their framework because nobody's really proposed how the U.S. should address these problems. Uh, okay, and I just, if you can wrap up, wrap, go ahead and wrap up. Okay, and I don't necessarily think international law really has 
uh, all the answers either. I, I really don't think if you use international law as a criticism of this war, that doesn't really resonate with people outside of uh, those who are already dedicated to international law as a concept. Uh, people will just say, well, the U.S. should intervene to protect, uh, you know, Iraqi lives, or the U.S. occupation needs to continue on, even though it is the greatest perpetrator of uh, violence. I think that the U.S. needs to withdraw immediately, uh, but we need to have a plan for uh, how we're going to address the fact that there's uh, many armed groups who don't really have a uh, representative constituency. Uh, they're basic, lots of them are outright fascist, just like the conflict in Palestine. If, I mean, who do you support, Fatah or Hamas? Uh, I mean, both of them aren't very democratic, uh, but their leaders have lots of weapons. Uh, okay. okay. Five minutes left. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so I guess I would just like to conclude that if we're going to uh, jog people out of their uh, frameworks, out of their daily lives, basically, because that's what we're talking about, uh, people have this ingrained notion that the U.S. is a humanitarian caretaker of the world. We need to present a framework for them to step into uh, that addresses issues like Darfur, which nobody has really addressed so far, even though there is mass murder going on there, like many of the other ethnic conflicts. Uh, so, yeah, I'd also just like to uh, restate that I'm not representative. SDS does not have an ideology, so I'm just representing myself here. I happen to be an organizational uh, person, so I uh, yeah, I just try and organize people, but SDS is non-sectarian, it doesn't have an ideology, and I think the internet can really help okay. facilitate discussions like this because uh, people can uh, help communicate and come, you know, it, uh, sorry, never mind, I was okay. going in another <laughs> direction.